This video will teach you how to use the Earthquake data source and filter settings in QuakeFeed. The data source and filter settings determine which earthquakes are displayed in the list and on the map. Tap the second button from the bottom left corner to view the filter settings screen. At the top, there is a summary that shows the earthquake data source and filter criteria. By default, QuakeFeed will use the USGS as the data source and will display all earthquakes M2.0 and higher from the past three days. If you tap on the summary, a menu appears and it shows you the options for customizing your filter settings. I will tap Change Data Source so that I can show you the options for the earthquake data feed. The USGS is the most comprehensive source for viewing earthquake events that have happened in the United States. I will select USGS, set the minimum magnitude to 1.0 and higher for all distances and the past one day. As you can see, inside the United States, there are earthquakes down to 1.0. But for the rest of the globe, the earthquakes are only magnitude four and higher. Next, I will make some adjustments to my filter settings. I want to see only earthquakes that are close to my location, but for a longer time frame. I will set the distance to within 100 miles of my location and I will extend the time period to 14 days. I am now seeing just the earthquakes within 100 miles of my location, indicated by the blue dot on the map. But those magnitude one earthquakes are really cluttering up the map. So I'm going to make an adjustment and set the minimum magnitude to 2.0 and higher. There, that looks better. Next, I will zoom out so that we can see Canada. And I will change the data source to Natural Resources Canada. NRC is the best data source for earthquakes in Canada. However, as you can see from the map, it only includes earthquakes in Canada. Earthquakes from the rest of the world are not in the NRC data feed. If I were to change the distance to within 400 miles of my location, you would see there's an error message here that says there are no earthquakes matching your filter criteria in the past three days there are no markers indicating earthquakes because there are no Canada earthquakes that are within 400 miles of my location. Also, if you look at the list, you will see the error message, there are no earthquakes that meet your search and filter criteria. I'm simply mentioning this so that if you happen to get that message while you're using QuakeFeed, that you might want to go in and check your filter settings, you might need to make an adjustment. Now I will change the data source to EMSC. EMSC is the best data source to use for earthquakes in most parts of the world outside of the US and Canada. Now, when I spin the globe, you will notice that there are many earthquakes, smaller earthquakes, smaller than 4.0. This is why the EMSC data feed is best for viewing earthquakes outside of the US or Canada. The next data source that I will show you is the filter by alert settings. Actually, before I do that, I will quickly show you my alert settings screen. Tap the button in the bottom left corner 
to view the alert settings. Notice that I have nearby alerts turned on and I have regional alerts set up for Canada magnitude 3.0 and higher, United States 3.0 and higher, and worldwide earthquakes magnitude 6 and higher. Notice also that the Canada regional earthquake alerts are using the NRC as the data source. And for the United States and the worldwide alerts, the USGS is the data source. Now I will go back to the filter settings screen and show you the filter by alert settings. I will set a maximum time period uh, for the past 30 days. You will notice that now Canada, US, and worldwide earthquakes are able to be displayed on the map at the same time. The Canada earthquakes are coming from the NRC data feed and the US and worldwide quakes from the USGS. If I switch to the list view by tapping the button in the top left corner, you will see that the list items indicate whether the data source is the USGS or the NRC. If I add another regional alert setting for, let's say, Greece, and I can set a minimum magnitude of 3.0 and higher, tap done. The map and the list will automatically be updated to reflect this new change in my alert settings. And you will notice that the earthquakes in Greece are marked as EMSC for the data source. Please be aware that if you have regional alert settings that are pulling from different data feeds, there is a chance that you can have duplicate events in the list. For example, based on my current settings, if there were an M6 or higher earthquake that happened in Canada, there would be duplicate events in the list and on the map, one from the NRC and one from the USGS. Likewise, if there were an M6 or higher earthquake in Greece, then there would be duplicate events, one from the EMSC and one from USGS. Next, I will show you the USGS historical data source. In order to view earthquakes that happened more than 30 days ago, you would need to use the USGS historical data source. For example, I would like to see the 2023 Turkey-Syria earthquake. I will select the USGS 6 month and 5 and greater, and I will set a minimum magnitude of 7.0 and higher. And now I can zoom in and see these two earthquakes. And I can view the USGS event page. Next, I'm curious to see the largest earthquakes that have happened since 1900. I will select the USGS historical data source. I will choose USGS since 1900 M7.5 and greater. I will set a minimum magnitude of 8.5 and higher. And now on the map, you can see the largest earthquakes that have been recorded since 1900. If you're curious to learn more about historical earthquake events, then I encourage you to try the 30-day free trial of QuakeFeed Premium. And if you have made it this far into the video, then you're sure to become a real pro at using the filter settings in QuakeFeed.